mind the cat? Get out of the house. Some people are so stupid. I bet she's mislaid the keys. Yeah, I told you, and he's in the kitchen. Why don't she go through the window? Oh, look, here we go. Select a knife. Carving knife or cleaver. That is all. Oh, you're <laughs> stupid. Shut up, Sean, and turn the light off. You see what I mean, Mum? The minute your back's turned, a woman give me nothing but grief. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Ambrose. <laughs> uh, Mum, Dad, back already? <laughs> well, obviously, we're too early for you. Well, how was the hairdresser's convention then? Well. Mrs. Shirley Pleasure Ambrose has only been offered a job working in one of the top hair salons in London. Da da! Buchanan's of Mayfair. Oh, really? Well, that's yeah. brilliant. Oh, wicked, Mum. So, how did that all come about then? Eh? Would you well, like a cup of tea, Mrs. Ambrose? Oh, that would be lovely, Louise. Thank you. Well, I was sitting in the hotel lobby waiting for your father, as usual, when this very glamorous woman comes up to me and asks me if my name is Mrs. Ambrose. Uh, which you but, denied. Rule number one, Mum, deny everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, at first I thought she was one of your father's friends. Mm. But then she looked like she had better taste. <laughs> <laughs> she introduced herself as April Buchanan. She said she was looking for experienced people to teach part-time in a new hairdressing salon she just opened. And would I be interested? Oh, you hear that, Louise? Maybe we should forget about the job centre and head for the nearest hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... What did you say? Oh, well, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. She's gonna call me this week to go over the details and then hopefully the job will be confirmed. Mm -hmm. And you don't mind, Dad? Mind? Why should I mind? My wife is her own woman. She can lead her own life. Shirley, where's my slippers? <laughs> Swahili for hello. Lee, you standing in for my duel? As it happens, it's him I'm here to see. Got a few business matters to sort out. Lee, listen, Swahili's what they speak in Kenya, mate. The Gambia's on the west side of the continent. Well, it's all Africa, isn't it? <laughs> You're doing business with Matthew? Yeah, a little bit of import, import, shell. See these? Uh -huh. One of Matthew's uncles knocks them up over there. Great to wear for work up Mayfair, shell. Ah, Lee. A job of my own. Oh, it would be nice. After all these years, bringing up the family. Bringing up Desmond? <laughs> <laughs> How about you then, pork pie? One of these, eh? The women love her, mate. No buttons, not I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, my apologies for being late, Lee, but I, um, I ran into a few difficulties regarding our order for the shirts. Oh, the workers ain't on strike, are they? No, 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 nothing like Great. that. Great. So when do we expect our first business consignment? Next week. But there's just one little detail we have 50, to 50 50 like I said. Now, I don't wish to be rude, Lee, but if we're going to be partners, then you have to learn to listen and not to interrupt. <laughs> well, sorry, Matt. Far away. It's my uncle. He has decided that we can't have the shirts unless we agree to donate part of our profit to his conservation charity. Which is? The Help a Hippo Fund. <laughs> I think what Lee had in mind was more like Mega Bundle for Lee fun. Uh, Are you trying to sell what charity would this? I'll have you know that me and charity, we're like that, mate. <laughs> right. Hello. 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 Oh, this is a surprise. I wasn't expecting yes, you to Yes, be... I'm sorry. I know I said I'd ring, but I hate to admit it, but I actually lost your phone number. There, that inspires your confidence in me now, doesn't it? Look, can we talk? I mean, yeah. do you have a minute? I hate to inconvenience you, but... Well, I see you're not too busy. Oh, no, no, this is one of our quiet times. <laughs> no, no, you won't be inconveniencing us at all. Uh, we can talk upstairs. Okay. I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> a Mrs. Buchanan, I presume? Well, it's not the man from the gas board, is it? <laughs> She certainly is a this. Did you see that look she gave me? What look was that? Well, I think it was a look of curiosity, wasn't it, walk by? <laughs> She's probably never seen anything quite like you. Who cares? At least you noticed me. Why is it that every time an attractive woman comes into this shop, poor pie turns into a jackass? <laughs> and Matthew into a gushing schoolboy? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. This Buchanan lady, it's not the same Buchanan as in Buchanan's and Mayfair, is it? Uh huh. Ah. Oh, you're a mine of information, you are, too. Uh, come on, guys, it was a big scandal. You sure you never heard about it? Not yet. We still waiting. Excuse me, gentlemen. How's it going, Shell? Ah. 
Shirley tonight. I wanted to get her advice on a culinary matter. She has gone out again with that Buchanan crowd. You mean with all those young students she mixes in with? Yeah, what, with all those young male students? <laughs> That's what's putting a spring in her step these days. The majority of her students are girls. That's what she's telling him. <laughs> okay. Shirley only has eyes for me, and I only have eyes for her. And my wife only had eyes for me, particularly the spare pair she kept in the back of her head. <laughs> Angela's gonna have to settle for a pretty face over a perfect pizza. Night, days. Then, look, who drove the van, set up the stalls and lugged all the boxes? You did, but who spent all day in a cafe across the road? Matthew. Matthew. I'm just not cut out for shoes, lady. Oh, well, Matthew, only profit making, eh? Hi. <laughs> How did it go, Daddy? Oh, don't, Daddy, it was dreadful. You saw what Matthew's uncle sent us, didn't you? Yeah, well, they're all like this. Talk about laughing stock, we sold one shirt all day. And these two can't even agree on a price. As soon as Lee goes off for a cup of tea, Matthew changes the ticket. <laughs> Here, there's one a present for you. Ah, a present? Yes. You said we couldn't give them away. I wanted to prove we could. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Uh, I have a very bad headache, actually. I shall have to have an early night. Must be the stress of carrying that magnificent business brain around with you. <laughs> Can someone please retort on my behalf? I don't have the energy. Good night. Hey, Glow, come on, it's nearly 20 to 7. Is it? Oh, see you later, folks. See ya. And I'll better get the van back to Clapham. Hold on. You going past Creighton Road? Yeah. Then you can give me a lift. What's all you know in Creighton Road? Mrs. Lowe. Mrs. Ah, oh, it's all right. There's this only a chip shop. <laughs> Me feel so responsible for everything when people call me by my surname. Uh, if you've come to visit Shirley, you've just missed her. She's gone out with the girls from your salon. I know. You know? Well, of course. It was me who organized the get together. And uh, shouldn't you be there? Well, yes, but to tell you the truth, Desmond, I really don't feel like a girl's night out. Is there somewhere I can hang? 
Of course. <laughs> Um, <coughs> uh, can I get you something to drink? Uh, uh, tea? Coffee? Fresh coffee? Instant. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Do you have any rum? Rum? You want rum? <laughs> if you have some, I'd love some, yes. Rum? <laughs> well, I think I could manage that. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I forgot to ask if you want any ice. No, I like it just as it comes, pure and unadulterated. <laughs> 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 What brings you here uh, to this neck of the woods, uh, just passing through? I'm here to see you, Desmond. Oh, so it's more of a crash landing and a flying visit. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it quite like that. I'd say that Birmingham was the launch, and this is the touchdown. <laughs> Desmond, aren't you going to kiss me? Eh? <laughs> Desmond Ambrose, you are a honk. <laughs> Keep sending more and more, which I have to pay for. Desmond, is it all right to leave these here? Certainly, Matthew. Whatever you want, be my guest. Matthew, don't leave your things in the middle of the floor. People might trip over them. Sorry, Look, Cheryl. Desmond, I won't be long, but Mrs. Buchanan might oh. call while I'm down the shops. Tell her I can do the Thursday, but not the Monday. Thursday? Uh, right, okay. <laughs> boom, baby, bada, boom. <laughs> You seem to be in a very happy mood today, Des. Well, why am I not, Matthew? The sun is up, the sky is clear. Yeah, but Des, it's Monday morning, mate. I mean, you should be moaning and groaning with the rest of us. No respect for tradition, man. Are we celebrating something? Oh, my man, Papa, I'm just dancing the blues again. <laughs> if you're not careful, that spring in your step will turn into a pacemaker in your chest. <laughs> I don't even think you're in love the way you're carrying on, Des. Me? In love? Who would I be in love with? Yeah, well, we shall you, of course. Unless you got another woman tucked away somewhere. <laughs> Hello, Desmond's of Peckham. This is the first time I've heard your voice on the telephone. It's really very sexy, Desmond Ambrose. <laughs> I think it's for you. You know what I think? I think we should buy cut this shop until the man sees yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, man. You just put in two and two together and coming up with four. I mean, six. Ah. <laughs> Your answer was right the first time round. I mean, you just going on the evidence of one man and insufficient evidence of that. It could have been a wrong number. Nah. No, I don't think so, Des. Paul Pye says she definitely wanted to speak to Desmond Ambrose. Yes. yes. Right. Well, you can come out to my shop right now. If you want us to go, I'm afraid you have to use force. That's a very good idea. <laughs> I'll get the police force. <laughs> Excuse me when they make the call. You better answer it. It might be a girlfriend. April. <laughs> April's fool. I thought a man was guilty until proven innocent. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, you've got that one right, especially in your case, Des. Well, I don't know what you're making all this fuss about. I can't help it if some woman come chasing after me. It's not just some woman, Desmond. It's your wife's boss. 
In the Gambia, an accused man has three choices. He can plead guilty or not guilty, or guilty with explanation. So, what's your explanation, Des? Right. Well, you better not bother coming back to work tomorrow. No, no, you're right, that's my day off. Yeah, and besides, <laughs> I don't think you're going to sack me, not until you've consulted with your partner. Michael? I don't have to consult Michael. If I want to sack one of my staff, I will. He's going to ask questions when he finds out Tony is no longer in your employ. And when Michael asks, we tell. <laughs> but that's... that's blackmail. Yes. <laughs> I bought us a little something. I don't know why, but Mondays are so boring. I always think they should be celebrated. Does that make sense? Um, where did you park the car? My car? It's in the garage. I took it in for a service this morning. Why, are you worried someone might recognise it and start putting two and two together? They already have. They? Who's they? Don't be silly, Desmond. Nobody knows me around here. Oh, they soon will. But not as well as you will, Dee Dee. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about this bubbly? You know, I really shouldn't call it that. It's damned expensive stuff, the old Bollinger. Yes. Seems a shame to waste it. Wasted? Why should I be wasted? Don't tell me you've got cold feet already. Relax, Desmond. This is meant to be fun. There's no point in it otherwise. Now, it'd be nice if we had some glasses. Uh, all the glasses are dirty. I only have mugs. <laughs> well, surely we can wash two off. Uh, the hot water is off. Then mugs it is. Are you sure you wouldn't prefer a cup of tea? To a bottle of Bollinger? <laughs> Desmond Ambrose, if you're trying to tell me you'd rather I wasn't here, then please tell me before I pop this cork. You have three seconds. One, two, three. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What are you doing? Have you lost something? Oh, uh, no, Charlie, you asked me to fix this dryer weeks ago. I couldn't find the missing part. <laughs> and you found it now, have you? Uh, yes, it was with the mugs. <laughs> and you think now is a good time to start fixing it? Desmond! <laughs> yes, April? <laughs> this relationship isn't going anywhere, is it? Uh, no, April. Thanks. I just wanted to clear that up before I go. You realise, of course, this means that as of tomorrow, your wife is no longer an employee of Buchanan. Yes, I do. So you weren't too desperate for the extra cash. Funny, I'd have thought otherwise. Uh, you're going? I don't think you'll be needing any of this. I can't imagine you and Shirley will have much to celebrate when you tell her she hasn't got a job anymore. And no doubt, you will tell her, won't you, Desmond? Good night, Desmond Ambrose. Happy groveling! <laughs> oh! So you're waiting up for me now, like my father? <laughs> well, if you'd like to check your watch, it is 25 past 11. Cinderella is early. The ball finished? Uh -uh. No, it's still going on, but I was tired. <sighs> Why are you so glum? Hmm? Desmond, what's up with you? I was thinking. Oh? What about? Uh, you and me. Oh, reminiscing. Well, you could say that. <laughs> I was thinking about the ups and downs we've had over the past 30 odd years. And how come we still together? Hmm. Well, it's because, Desmond Ambrose, over the past 30 years, I've let you get away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> but you better take care. Things are changing round here. <laughs> Mrs. Buchanan's been advising me. 
<laughs> and what advice would she give you about cheating husbands? Well, you mean apart from making sure they go to early grave? Yes, well, apart from that. <laughs> I wouldn't need her advice. I just pack up my bags and I'd be gone. You wouldn't see me for dust. Not even taking into account that you've had 30 long years together? Is it my imagination? Are you trying to tell me something, Desmond? I'm trying to tell you something, yes. Well, I'm keen to hear it, but I could do it without all this suspense and the drama. My idea, exactly. That's why I decided to stop seeing her. Stop seeing who? April. <laughs> Desmond, what you telling me? You telling me that while I was out working in that salon, you and Mrs. Buchanan... Yes. Yes? I mean, don't get the wrong idea. I mean, we never... Oh, ever... yeah, Desmond Andrews. <laughs> you sit down there all brazen-faced, telling me you've been having an affair with my boss. How could I possibly get the wrong idea? Well, it wasn't so much an affair, more a kind of mild flirtation, mostly orchestrated by her. Oh, really? And I suppose you just stood up there and watched her waving her stick? <laughs> Not exactly. So, what it is you want now? Eh? Forgiveness. I confess all my sins to Shirley. Now she must forgive me and we can start all over again. I tell you, Desmond, if it's forgiveness you're looking for, you're out of luck. Hmm. I don't know why it should come as such a surprise. <laughs> It's not the first time I found out you've been playing around, but I really thought you'd have grown out of that by now. I should have known better. Talk, Desmond. I want to talk. Well, I don't know what to say. And anything I say will upset you. I mean, all I know is I made a mistake and I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a very high price to pay for a few new friends and a Little more self-confidence, Shirley Ambrose. That's what my mother would have said. She'd have blamed me for leaving the nest unattended. Accuse me of neglecting my duties as a wife. Hmm, you know, I have a sudden urge to find that woman, Carol, and just smash it to pieces. <laughs> well, I suppose your mother would have accused me of neglecting my duties as a husband. <laughs> <laughs> You got a crooked finger and a crooked smile. But if I didn't like your style, I wouldn't have walked this mile. <laughs> <laughs>